Good morning and welcome to my studio. It's a wonderful space with uh, brick walls here in the mills overlooking the Saco River in Biddeford. I'll show you a little bit about what I do to create the encaustic works today. Firstly, we have a table that I use which contains all sorts of goodies used to create the uh, panels. If you think of encaustic as just another kind of paint, you have your different colors uh, that you melt down and then you apply them with a paintbrush. Similarly, you can make, you can mix the colors and come up with new colors and um, just like you would while painting on a, on a palette. So here's, you know, some of the basic ones. There's also some uh, different powdered pigments that you can use to mix right into the wax to create your, they, this is a little bit um, more cost effective because you can create a lot more with a pigment color than you can with just a, blocks of, a block of wax. Um, we also have some mica and various things that make the waxes shimmer. And then we have some oil paints. I don't use a lot of them, but once in a while they come in handy. And then all kinds of tools that are uh, typically the tools that you would see for working with clay. Uh, because wax, when you put it on the panels, can be carved into just like you would into a clay surface. My palette is actually a kitchen skillet like you would buy to cook bacon on or whatever. And I have these little pans that I purchase just for the wax. And you add your color into these and your temperature is about 200. And you apply it with a paintbrush. I've started doing that here with um, one of the projects I'm working on. I've got two colors on and we'll be adding some more shortly. You apply the wax once it's on the panel with a blowtorch. You can use a large or a small one such as these which are typically used for making creme brulee. Another medium is a soft oil pastel that it's more like a encaustic oil stick and I sometimes use those to create my colors. The medium comes already mixed. Encaustic wax is a combination of Damar resin and beeswax and you can have it, I buy it pre-made into these pellets because they're a lot easier to work with. You can buy large slabs of beeswax and melt down your own uh, Damar resin, but it's, you know, if you get your ratio wrong, you end up with a cracked painting. So I have various things in the works at one time. Uh, I have a giant crock, well not giant, but I have a huge crock pot here for melting just plain wax when I want to start a surface. This is a 24, 20, I think it's a 26 by 36 painting that started, the first thing you do is you lay down a coat of wax, several coats of wax, and then you heat it to make it adhere to the panel. You do that five or six times, so you build up some layers. And then once you're done with that, you can begin painting with the colors. These are some of the newer pieces that I've been working on for the upcoming show. As you know, I'm pretty much a water person. I like to try to translate paintings into scenes with water. I also love to sail, so some of the themes are sail related. I am working on a couple of different things now that is more of a collage sort of idea. Uh, I use vintage images, stamps, newspapers, old letters, and netting, whatever I can find to create these mini collages. They kind of um, give a sense of intrigue for some of the paintings. As usual in my larger paintings, I love to use uh, letters from the 1800s and shipping information uh, to go in with a painting to kind of uh, 
lend it to shipping of the olden days kind of feeling. Here's one I've recently been working on that's quite different. Uh, I'm using different tacks and images and lots and lots of layers of wax with mica in it. I like that it's more textural. A lot of times you can only see these paintings in their best light from the side when you can actually look at all the different carvings in them. And then I am also working on working with just white surfaces and adding bits of gold leaf, I'm trying to branch out some. Hopefully you will like them. All right, I'm going to go back and start working on one of the pieces here so I can get an idea. But I will show you one thing quickly. If you know me at all, you know that I hate the color orange. Yep hate the color orange. And this piece is all sorts of colors I never use, but I like it. It's a raised sort of wax for the birch trees, which I achieved by taping off with uh, painter's tape. And then I apply the white as the last element. So something new for me, not sure how that will go, but definitely different than the C images that I typically do. All right, let me see if I can turn this around and see if I can show you what I'm working on today. Let's see if I can set this up just right without tipping it over. Oop, I don't know, hold on. There, let's see if that works without falling over. So, I've taken a small 12 by 12 panel and I've applied two different colors to it so far. And after each color, I like to add a clear coat of wax to kind of secure the layers underneath. So that's what I'm doing now, just putting down a layer of clear. And each layer builds up the depth of your painting so that when you're ready to, you can start carving into the paintings and giving them dimension. This is where, if I wanted to, I would be adding some newspaper articles or old um, images. For instance, I have a whole box of images that I like to use. And this is where I could actually take one of those old antique letters and insert some of it right into the wax. The best way to do that is to put down a little bit of layer of clear, decide where you want that paper to go, which I'm going to put right here, and then give it a clear covering of of wax to hold it in place. Now, one thing you'll always need if you're working with encaustic is a pick. And that's because every now and again, your paintbrush will lose a piece of its brush and get embedded in your paint. So it's easier if you just have a pick to take that out when it happens. Now I'm just gonna paint over this newspaper because as time goes on, and I use sculpting tools, it will reveal itself again later on. I just have to remember sort of where I put it on the, on the block. All right, I'm gonna add that. And I use my torch. I'm trying to make for an image. It's not like landscape painting where you, well, like it could be in some instances, but in this case, I'm just trying to create a feel of waves and water. And um, so I'm not really working from an image trying to 
create something that looks photorealistic. See, I've got some white paint. Every now and then you have to clean off your palette, your heating palette, so that you don't end up with just brown wax because it will all mix together as it would on a regular painting surface. Now in this case, I'm going to add a little white, which is hard to come by with a pandemic going on. It seems to have gone the way of the toilet paper, bread, and other missing items. It's been kind of hard to get some in, but I finally did today. So I'm going to go ahead and use the white paint. Let's see if I can get it. Apply some of that right on top. fun about the way this, uh, the white paint rather, is that it sometimes mimics ocean foam. Depends on how you put it on, but most of the time you can actually get it to imitate ocean foam. And I'm putting that through. I'm going right over that newspaper that I had put in there. I'm kind of trying to cover up the edges of that newspaper. And then I'm going to see how that looks. moving and cools down a little bit. I'll show you what it's come out like thus far. I'm trying to make it so that newspaper isn't so, doesn't have such an obvious border on it. I don't want to just kind of bury it in wax. Okay. Let's see what that does. Of course, I have had an occasion where I'm painting along with a blowtorch and I actually set fire to the newspaper I'm using, which is never really a good idea. Okay, so at this point, once it's cool, you can see how this is starting. I've got a little bit more to go to bury this, this side of the newspaper so that it's not seen. And uh, then it will, I'll keep adding different colors, many different colors and it'll be done. When I finish with the top, I usually seal the edges with the same colors of paint so that it doesn't chip. And then I have to come up with a name, which is usually the hardest part of it. Thanks for watching.